All right, welcome to SCTG. My name is Chris Recksteiner. In today's discussion, we are going to focus on business continuity, specifically why business continuity and a business continuity plan is critical for success. Now, we put together a very brief agenda on this. We're going to tackle five key questions in this area in today's discussion. The first is what is business continuity? Why is it critical to your success? We'll give you a very simple model to easily and quickly assess financial risk for your organization. And then we'll discuss the top three business continuity planning and execution challenges. First up, what is business continuity? The reason we start here is that it's important for everybody involved in the business continuity process to understand what is meant when that term is used. One of the things that we see very often is that as an organization gets together and begins planning and strategizing is that there isn't a common understanding of the words or the terms or the processes being used. So we like to ground each of these efforts right up front and say, okay, what is business continuity and how are we as an organization defining it? Your organization may want or need a slightly different definition than this. But at its core, what a business continuity or business continuity plan refers to is the process of creating systems of prevention and recovery so that you will have the capability and the capacity to operate critical business processes, operations, applications, and services during a disaster event or a disruption to the normal state of business. It doesn't have to be a full-blown disaster. It can just be a disruption where, for instance, all of a sudden everybody is working remotely. The business continuity plan itself is a collection of policies, procedures, and actions that are clearly understood throughout an organization, are tested regularly, and can be quickly executed should they be required. That's a very important point, that they have to exist, they have to be tested, and everybody needs to understand what they are. Again, what is the definition and what is included in that plan? Consistency and clarity in this plan is really going to be critical for success. So why is business continuity critical to your success? Let's take a look at some of the data and really what informs the need for such a plan and such an investment to be made by an organization today. First and foremost, if you are a small or medium-sized business, so a small business being roughly less than 100 employees and a medium-sized business being anywhere from 101 to 1,000 employees, on average, your business is going to experience one continuity event, disaster event, each year. Now, this data comes from a number of sources, IDC, Gartner, 451, Ponemon Institute, Small Business Administration, as well as a host of the primary research that we execute. But what's important to note here is that no one is immune to this. It's going to happen, so you do need to be prepared. And knowing that you are going to have at least one continuity issue per year means you probably do want to have that plan in place because the repercussions of not having that plan ready are pretty significant. And we'll show you exactly how significant as we go through this discussion. As it stands today, 57% of small businesses have no business continuity plan. And when you move upstream to those medium-sized businesses, it's 47%. It's still pretty bad. So almost half, a little over half of businesses in the small and mid-sized markets do not have a business continuity plan. Now, that paints a pretty bleak picture and it really calls into question what's going to happen should a business continuity event occur. Well, that's pretty bleak too. 25% of small and mid-sized businesses will never reopen after a disaster event. 43% of them will never reopen after a catastrophic data loss. So a disaster event isn't even as bad as a data loss. A data loss, almost half of the organizations that experience that are at very, very serious risk of continuing operation. And 75% of SMBs without a plan are statistically out of business in three years. Now this stands to reason because again, on average, you're going to have at least one business continuity issue a year and over the course of three years, if you survive one, that becomes cumulative and the lack of a plan will ultimately be a very big hurdle for a business to overcome. The last data point in this that's really important to note is that over 60% of business continuity events or disaster events are caused by human error. 
And this is important because systems and processes exist with people. Businesses exist with people. And that human error is going to happen. It's not often going to be malicious. It's very likely going to just be a mistake that causes a ripple or trickle down effect inside of the business and forces you to enact your business continuity plan and then execute in that state for some period of time. The reason why we highlight this is that the plan covers lots of different aspects of business, but knowing that over 60% of the time that your plan is going to have to be enacted as a result of human error really shines a light on the fact of how important it is to have the plan because your business is about people. Your community is about people. It's going to happen, so you do ultimately need to be prepared. The next question or the next statement really is how to quickly assess your financial risk. Now, one of the biggest challenges that we run into in working with organizations is helping them understand exactly what is at risk and why a continuity plan is so important. It doesn't have to be a multi-hundred page document. It can be a very simple and straightforward plan, but ultimately that plan does have to exist. The reason being, when you look at the math around any business continuity plan, any business, you're looking at an average outage of about 107 minutes. And what that means is that when something occurs, you can expect your business to be impacted for an average of 107 minutes or just under two hours. Now for a small business, again, less than 100 employees, that equates to about $1,100 of revenue lost per minute or about $117,000 of total revenue at risk for a disaster event. Now that's pretty significant. The $117,000 may or may not be consequential to your top or bottom line as a business, but it's a pretty big number. And if you think about the fact that you're very likely to experience one of these events during the course of a year, again, statistically speaking, you will, that's a lot of risk. Now, when you take this and you move upstream to mid-market organizations, it increases. The revenue loss per minute on average is about $7,900, and the overall impact of that 107-minute outage comes out at just around $845,000. Again, it gets real very, very quickly because we're talking about a time frame of less than two hours, resulting in a very significant hit to revenue. So, what's the best way to calculate your risk. Now, there are very, there are an incredible number of very complex and sophisticated models that will help you do this. We found that really working with a very, very simple equation is best. Start with the total revenue of your organization. Take that total revenue and divide it by the number of minutes in a year, and that's 525,600. Then, the result of that, multiply it by the 107 minutes that the average downtime or pardon me, that is the average downtime of an event. Now, when you look at the simplicity of this math, it's kind of alarming because it's really, really basic. It is a very simple calculation. However, when we work with an organization, most of the time when they're asked this question, they don't have any idea what their risk profile is. They don't know what this number is. It doesn't make much sense. It's not hard math. It's very, very easy to do. It takes about two minutes to do it, and it will provide a really good guide to understanding exactly what your business faces should something occur. It doesn't mean it's exact. Like I said, this is a super simple way of framing what the potential risk is so you can figure out what is needed to put your plan in place and how aggressively you need to invest in that plan. So. Let's put one sort of wrapper on that in assessing the potential risk. Of the SMBs in 2019 that noted a business continuity issue or disaster event, 50% of them said that it lasted longer than a full workday. Now what that means is that that 107 minutes is a fraction. It is less than a quarter of what was actually experienced when an event occurred. This is important because those numbers about what happens with those averages are something you need to know and understand and then recognize that those are baselines or those are averages and then understand what the variance will be 
based upon the amount of time a particular system or a particular process can be down and what that overall risk can be to the business. It's really, really important to understand that variance so that you know what the high and low end are, you know what your midline is going to be, and you can make decisions based upon what those projections are. And perhaps in your plan, what you might do is have different actions or different decisions that are brought into play based upon how it shifts. Is it going to be longer than 107 minutes or two hours or three hours? Is it going to be longer than a day? And these can trigger different decisions and different processes for your organization in order to stay really positively focused on driving the business forward in a profitable way, even when in a business continuity plan state. Now, the three business continuity planning challenges. There's a lot of challenges associated with planning, but what we wanted to do was boil this down to really the top three issues that organizations face. And this comes from a host of different research, both our own and third party. But again, we sort of summarized this to just highlight what most organizations are going to run into. And we'll offer a couple little tips of how to manage them as well. The first one is lack of management support. The second one, I'm gonna blow this out really quickly, is budget. And the reason being is that lack of management support typically comes from the fact that there is no context to it. We need a business continuity plan or we need a disaster recovery plan means I need two of everything. While two of everything means two X of the budget, when in fact that isn't grounded in anything other than duplicating what you do today. The ability to put a plan together and understand what the risk is will go a long way towards gaining management support, helping everyone throughout the organization understand what is at stake. And then most importantly, really truly understand how budget can be applied to addressing this particular risk. For some organizations, it might not be worth it to make a significant investment. For other organizations, it might be critical to make a significant investment in that continuity plan. But the lack of management support in the budget really do go hand in hand because in almost every instance when we see one or more or one or both, excuse me, of these issues come up, it's because it can't be quantified. It isn't tangible. And I think it's really important for an organization to understand exactly what those risk profiles are. Again, build that map that shows what is your midline, what is your high and low end forecasts of that risk, and then be able to execute to it accordingly. The final one is identifying critical applications and processes. And this is much more complex because in any organization, there are myriad apps and processes that have to be considered. And this is so deep, in fact, that we're going to put together a second session that focuses specifically on how to execute this process. So we'll get that up in the coming weeks and get everybody involved in that. If you have any questions, please reach out and let us know. We'll be happy to answer them in advance, but know that we're going to dive into this in a lot more detail. The TLDR version of this, it's really important to know what applications and processes are in place and are critical and which are not critical and not just to you, but critical to the organization and everybody's ability to execute. A lot of times simply asking the question as to how someone uses an application and its role in their day-to-day life, their day-to-day business life is going to shed a lot of light into what needs to be seen as critical and what doesn't. Now, this is something that a lot of people right now, especially, are becoming very familiar with, the idea of essential. And I don't want to go down that path because it isn't really about something being essential. It's about what is critical to your business in the sense that it enables you to continue to serve your community. Are your partners still engaged? Are your customers engaged? Are your employees engaged? Each of those constituent groups, your whole community, need to be considered in the identification of this process. And as I said, that's a whole undertaking and we'll address that in a separate session. It's a little bit too much to add into this conversation. Our last question, what are the top three business continuity execution challenges? Now, this is a little bit more complex and we'll dive into these in a tiny bit more detail, but it starts with communication and inside of communication, social media, and I'll sort of walk into that and explain that in a little bit more detail. But communications means the communications that are executed to employees and partners during a business continuity plan implementation. So when you're executing your plan, it is live. How are you communicating? 
What's really critical here is to note that the challenge that exists in communication is not the ability to communicate. It's whether or not the contact data and the data on record for each individual and organization is correct. Now that sounds really silly because when you think about having CRM and all of these systems, you know exactly what is in the system. It's the information. The challenge is that isn't used in this scenario. It isn't used in this manner on a consistent basis. So there's a lot of data that isn't up to date, is perhaps incorrect, and needs to be addressed. So the biggest challenge in executing the business continuity plan is the ability to communicate with everybody you need to communicate with. And again, that's your employees, your partners, and your customers, your broader community. And all of the contact information across all of those constituent groups becomes critical and must be correct. That's a big undertaking and something that really does need a lot of time and attention, but it is something that is critical because without it, you cannot reach out to everybody. That brings us to social media. What happens in social media, as we all know, is that you have the ability to, for, to really rapidly disseminate information, right? To push something out very, very quickly to large groups of people. The problem with that is that when you're trying to communicate something really critical across a widely dispersed team or group of teams or members of a community, it's hard for them to see it in all of the noise, right? The signal through the noise ratio of social media platforms is very, very challenging. So by using those platforms, you do have the reach, but now you're also fighting against everything else that is in place. What you're also fighting against are any third parties that are going to also be disseminating information at or near what you're trying to communicate, and that is going to cause conflict. In many cases, it's going to wreak a pretty significant amount of havoc on the individuals in your community that are one or two steps removed from your business on a day-to-day -day basis, but are aware of it and know it. And all of a sudden, that separation or that distance is going to cause a lot of confusion, which is going to increase the number of inquiries or really cause a lot of very significant challenges in helping people understand what needs to be done or how they need to execute in this particular time. We can dive into communication in a whole bunch more detail. In fact, there's a piece we're working on right now that goes over the best practices for this that we'll be sharing in an additional session as well. So know right now, the one thing to focus on in the business continuity execution is to make sure that all of the data that you have for the people you need to communicate with is correct and that they know to expect these types of communications from you in that particular channel. The second one is connectivity. And in the last 30 days, we've all become intimately aware of this with the increase in remote work. Connectivity here is critical because as we have widely dispersed workforces, the ability for existing workspaces and applications and data to all be available is critical. Now, in most cases, organizations have a model for this, right? Everything is either on net or it's on the internet. On net will require a VPN or some form of authentication in order to access it, and third-party SaaS applications are just available on the internet so you can connect. What happens here when you're forced into a much broader deployment of remote work is that these systems were not actually designed to support everyone being remote simultaneously. So there's a lot of backlog, there's a lot of congestion in the system in terms of allowing that access. One thing you'll want to do relative to that type of connectivity is understand in each application set or each business process who ultimately needs that VPN access if your system is not dynamic or elastic to expand through licensing and physical availability for those connections or for those connections, excuse me, to occur. What happens is look at each individual process, look at each individual application and identify the people that need that. If that resource is only available on net, make sure they have primary access to the VPN environment in order to conduct that work. If those individuals are primarily connecting to third-party SaaS platforms, they're likely going back out over the public internet anyway in order to get access to those systems unless you have direct connect or express route connections to those types of platforms. If you do, obviously the VPN makes sense. If you don't, bringing people in to your network via VPN to turn around, send them back out over the public internet in order to access a third-party SaaS platform 
increases latency, it slows down traffic on your network, it slows down usability for the end user, for your customer, for your employee, and ultimately just increases costs. When you're in a business continuity model and your plan is in place and you are actively executing it, the last thing you want to do is add complexity. You probably don't need that VPN connection for those specific activities or for the connectivity to those specific individual platforms. Take a look at them and see what's there and adjust the plans accordingly. The reason why I highlight this is it's something we see a lot of, and it really comes down to two things. Number one is an increase in the licensing and the physical infrastructure necessary to support everybody suddenly becoming remote and the use of those remote secure connectivity environments in order to turn around and go back out to the public internet. Watch those both very closely because you can spend a lot of money adding all of those licenses, expanding infrastructure, making it all available when you won't receive any benefit because all you're doing is adding cost for people to then turn around and connect to third-party SaaS platforms that are on the web to begin with. The other aspect, kind of the final aspect of connectivity, make sure that mobile hotspots work. The reason why I highlight this is in the past few weeks, we've had a number of instances both in our organization and have heard from other uh, members of our community that there were very untimely network updates from ISPs. And I personally had this happen last week where for four hours we were taken offline while they were doing network upgrades in our neighborhood. Make sure that the hotspot service on mobile phones works. In a worst case scenario, you have the ability to spin up that as your connectivity point, and it's not gonna be great, it's not gonna be super fast, but it's going to keep you online when it is most critically needed for you to be online. Very, very simple process to test, very easy thing to do, but something that can come in quite handy. And as I said, we've seen a lot of this happen in the last few weeks. Pay super close attention to that. Those little things can really go a long way to helping people stay productive and really feel on top of everything that's going on when you're operating in a continuity state. The final item, consistency. When an organization is operating within its business continuity plan, the core consistency, the core way that operations and processes take place is going to be tested. And it's going to be tested in ways that you didn't anticipate, in ways that you can't anticipate. Just like the VPN thing, you have remote access, remote access systems are there, and all of a sudden it's everybody, not the sales group that's always remote or one group that typically uses it. You go from a small percentage of users to a very large percentage or 100% of users. Those are things that aren't really expected. They aren't really tested. Know that that's going to happen and know that the pressure on those operations and processes will be very real and it will be very uneven. Being ready, knowing that that's going to happen, being prepared, available to address those types of gaps or any previously unknown issues that show up is going to be a critical success factor. It's going to help people understand that everybody is on top of this, everybody is watching it, and is in pursuit of the same goal. Now, that's super easy to say. It's really, really, really hard when you think about everything going on in a dynamic organization, even in a small business, up to 100 employees. That's a lot of systems, a lot of operations, a lot of processes, and a lot of people. Be aware that it's going to get tested in ways you didn't expect. Make sure that the consistency of the communication and the involvement and the support is very, very high because that will help level everything out and make sure that when you are executing in your business continuity plan, you are doing so in a way that people see as measured, controlled, and ultimately successful. That perception becomes very, very critical as new challenges are presented. So don't shy away from that. Step up and meet those head on. So that's what we have for the business continuity plan session today. If you have any questions, please reach out. You can visit us at servercentral.com and the slash is required a business continuity plan. There's a dash between each of those words. We'll put that in the notes so you can click on it instead of writing it down. But if you have any questions, please ask. We will take any of the questions that come in. We will put together an answer if it is 
best suited as a blog, as a screen capture, as a webinar, as a pod, as whatever. We'll get the answers put together. We'll get them published back out on this page. And since you've registered for this, we will let you know when those questions and answers are published so that you can come back and get them and share them within your organization as necessary. As I mentioned, up next, we are going to walk through a model showing how to assess business continuity needs on an application by application basis. As soon as that's ready, we will let you know and we look forward to chatting with everybody then. Stay safe and thank you for joining SCTG.